Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt from a recent power-up webinar called Photoshop for Video. This excerpt illustrates how to retouch video using Photoshop. This is a video clip. I'm going to pull this video clip in. And the problem is, I've got a guy snowboarding, and there's a shadow of the camera guy. Now, I'm not exactly sure who's the bigger fool, the fool that's riding the snowboard or the fool that's riding along the edge of a cliff shooting a different fool on a snowboard. Now, color me perhaps a bit, a bit uh, biased here, but I think they're both a bit nuts. So if I play this clip, notice the shadow that you see creeping in there. Then the guy jumps. Let's try that again and this time I'll move it slower, we see the shadow of the cameraman in the foreground, which makes me think he's right around the edge of a cliff. Why is he doing that? And I'm worried more about the cameraman than the brilliant jumper of the snowboardist. Well, if I make the shadow of the camera guy disappear, I can then concentrate exclusively on paying attention to the incredible jump being performed by this daredevil as opposed to the photography being done by that daredevil. Well, Photoshop allows us to change video images the same way that we change still images, and here's how. I'm going to clone out the shadow. Because I don't want to lose this black border, which is representative of the actual DV frame, I'm going to draw a marquee, a safe area, that just says correct that which is inside it. Then I select the clone tool, hold the option key down right here, and drag over and get rid of the shadow. No shadow except, um, uh, how do I change the image? How do I move to the next frame? And the answer is, the secret control is go up to window, go down and show the animation controller. This allows us to move one frame at a time. Let me just move this out of the way for a second. The letter V. Do, do, do. Let's hide this and make this smaller so we can see what's going on, and then go show the animation window. And to move to the next frame, you click the Next Frame button. Again, go to the Clone tool. If I click over here, outside the selected area, nothing happens. The selected marquee tells me just that part of the frame that I'm going to correct. Done. Well. You don't need to watch me do all 45 of these frames because, frankly, life is too short. I did it before this session started, and I timed myself. And to correct, to clone, this image took me about, it was 45 frames, took me about 20 seconds a frame, took me about 15 minutes to do. To show you the results, this is the, the source, And then this is the cleaned up version. Not only do you not see it, you don't even know that there's something missing because your eye is totally captivated by the jumper. You don't notice that those shadows have disappeared. So the ability to clone and modify and improve video frames inside Photoshop is exactly the same as we have inside Photoshop for still images, except content-aware scaling, content-aware fill, and video editing, video cloning, requires the extended version of Photoshop as opposed to just the generic version of Photoshop. The last step is to export the video. We go up to File, go down to Export, and you say Render Video. This is how you get the video out. And for those of you that have played with After Effects, this will look very similar. You give this a name, give it a location, determine what video format you want it to be. QuickTime Movie Settings is where you determine what the format is. If you're wanting to keep the highest possible image quality and you're on an earlier version of Photoshop, set this to Animation. If you're on the latest version of Photoshop running Final Cut 7 or Final Cut 10, you want to set this to be Apple ProRes 422HQ. 
Apple ProRes 4 to 2 HQ, or if you want the extremely highest quality, Apple ProRes 4x4. ProRes 4 to 2 HQ or ProRes 4x4. 4x4 is about the best quality you can possibly get, but the file sizes are really big. 4 to 2 is a good compromise between outstandingly good quality and somewhat smaller file sizes. If I'm moving files between applications, between After Effects and Final Cut, or between Photoshop and Final Cut, most of the time I'm going to do 4 to 2 HQ. It's still going to have to render when it gets into my project, but it starts at a higher quality level, and my rendering ends up not being noticeable, the quality that I get. Sound, if you're moving between programs, you never prepare for internet streaming. There's no audio associated with the clip, so I uncheck audio, and you make the size is equal to current, current, and that way it matches the image size of your source media. Never apply filters. Size is always current. Settings should be either animation for Final Cut 5 or 6, or ProRes uh, 4 to 2 HQ or ProRes 4x4 for Final Cut 7 or Final Cut 10. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit my store at larryjordan.biz store.